So very recently I, I did a video on the uh, Hyperkin Retron SQ and uh, in that video I believe I mentioned that there were some other options for um, playing your Game Boy on your TV. Uh, but there was one option that I alluded to and did not mention by name because I wasn't supposed to mention it at that point. But anyway, got that right here. Just came out. Uh, just got one shipped to me. Uh, the very first batch has already sold out. I don't know if it was just a small batch or if it's really in demand or what, but the listing right now does show that they're unfortunately sold out. Um, but anyway, what we here have is the brand new IPS kit from the uh, manufacturer that I've been so affectionately referring to as One Chip or OC. Comes with a uh, glass screen lens, pretty typical. And then we've got this and this cable here. Now this cable is something pretty unique um, because what this does when this is wired properly is you plug this end into your Game Boy Advance. You've got your link port connector here and then the headphone connector here and then all the way on the other side we have your video and audio out. Um, I always get these two confused. I'm going to say one and almost always mean the other one, composite and component. Um, this is what I'm referring to, but I, I'm probably going to say the wrong term at some point and I apologize in advance. But this is, this is for those of us who uh, weren't born yesterday. Um, this is what our home consoles hooked to our TVs for the longest time. It is the uh, the standard of mid-2000s tech. And, um, I mean, it was alright at the time. It hasn't aged well. I'm a little bit sad to see it come back, but hopefully it's for the better. Nonetheless, it is pretty cheap, and it is pretty easy to use. Um... Hopefully you've got a TV that still has those ports on it. I personally don't, so I, if I want to use this on my TV, I'll need something like a retro tank or an OSSC uh, just to plug into this thing and then plug into the TV. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Um, but either way, the backlight kit on Retro Game Repair Shop is 80 bucks right now, which is a little bit pricier than the other ones, but... Uh, it's got a few extra features compared to the regular backlight kit. So, let's go ahead and crack it open and see what we get. We get the uh, double-sided adhesive for securing the screen to the shell. We get the screen itself, and these are... Ooh, this is the brand new LG screen, which I am working on a video on these. Um, I'll talk more about those later, but long story short, there are now three different variants of screens with these IPS kits. Um, this is this is the the good one. Uh, we've got the PCB itself with the touch sensors, the two ribbon cable adapters for whether you have a 30 pin or a, a 32 pin or a 40 pin some wire to attach it up, some insulation film, and then little laser cut pieces of acrylic. These are for centering your screen within the console itself. If you're using an OEM shell and you're cutting it up, you're probably going to want these. Um, if you're using a... Uh, you, you can use like an IPS ready shell uh, Funny Playing makes them, but they do require modification to fit one of these boards. Uh, but there are actually three other manufacturers making IPS ready shells. Three other? One, two, yeah, three other manufacturers making IPS ready shells right now. So they're not too hard to get a hold of. Um, in fact, I just recently did video on these bad boys, but it probably won't, 
this will probably come, go up after this video, so stay tuned, I promise. Um, the other one that I had in mind, uh, Funny Playing, and then of course we have the Red-Headed Stepchild that is Retro 6, but I really don't recommend those shells. Um, and the third one, I mentioned there were three, I'm actually planning on using today. Check that out for the first time. All right, so I am going to go ahead and set this stuff aside for the time being. Because before we install this thing, we do have to test it. And before we can test it, I have to take the console apart. And so here is tonight's donor. It is a perfectly stock Game Boy Advance, uh, Game Boy Advance not an SP, that I've had in my parts bin for unknown reason. Um, it seems to work fine though, so I have no idea why it was in my parts bin. But here we go, we'll use it. I'm thinking that I put it in there because there was room in the parts bin and there was not room in the donor's bin. That has changed, but... Oh, it's missing a screw. I wonder if that's related. I may have taken this apart and fixed it at some point, and it was because it was missing parts like a battery cover and a screw. I just threw it in the parts bin. Figured I'll uh, get to it at some other point. I don't know though, I forgot to label it. Anyway, sorry, rambling. Same as usual to take these bad boys apart. It's just six tri-wings, tri-point screws around the periphery, and then one JIS screw in the battery compartment. Not Phillips, JIS. There is a difference. I'm using the J1 bit for that. Come off. I am going to reuse these with the new shell. bale slides up and then you can uh, pull the motherboard out, put your finger on the ribbon to hold it down and then just lift the motherboard off and it will come out just nicely. And there we go. Alright, so I would like to now test the screen but because of who I am as a person I want to do some power usage tests um, but to do that I need to get a stock baseline value and, well, I suppose we can do it in the shell. There's no problem with that. I was just about to say, I have to go grab another screen because I don't want to really rip this one out, but there's no reason it has to come out. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm even going to go ahead and put one of these screws back in. So to test this, I am going to use my usual game and my usual power supply. Mm, we should probably set it to... Come on. There we go. Same voltage I usually use, 2.4. And let's try it out. So we're just going to do the same test that I usually do in the same place with the exact same game. At 2.4 volts, this Game Boy is pulling anywhere from 96 to 82 milliamps. 81, no, 80. Anywhere from 80 to 96 milliamps. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because my graph is really zoomed out. Uh, but what happens is this thing just kind of jumps all over the place 
and the sample rate on my power supply is high enough that it just shows it jumping around all over the place instead of just averaging the value. So what I do is I take the high value that I see and the low value that I see and then just average them together in my spreadsheet. It makes it easier to, gra to get a, um, a concrete number to compare, but again, these are all just estimates at best, especially since power usage on these things tends not to be linear. But I use this to say, hey, if it's pulling 100 milliamps before the mod, and 200 milliamps after the mod, that means it should get somewhere around half the battery life, and that's usually a ballpark estimate, and usually close enough. So that is why I get that number, and that spreadsheet is of course going to be linked in the description as, you, as usual. Rather, I tend to link to the Reddit thread, um, which links to the spreadsheet I suppose it's time to create a new Reddit thread since that one's old enough that the uh, thread got locked. Make sure you use the correct cable and the correct side of the cable. The IPS mod side of the cable is only 30 pins, so it fits in there nice and loose. You don't want to use that side, use the other side. And the reason we want to test this before installing is because if there is a problem, we don't want to get too far in the process. Then have to undo work. Also, it's helpful for determining if there's a problem with the install itself or with the kit. If we try it out ahead of time and it works just fine, then all is well. And I'm just going to let that dangle off to the side like that. It does work. So that's, that's nice, I guess. Uh, but while we're here, Get some power usage numbers, because why not? Alright, so this kit does have the same features as the older version in that it has selectable color palettes and brightness adjust. And unfortunately, my touch sensors are kind of tangled up, so I can't really hit one without hitting the other. But we'll set it back to... Normal colors, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine levels of brightness. So on minimum, I see it pull in, I think that was 218 to no, 217 to 247. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on high brightness, 351 to 324. Not too bad, but you are going to notice the difference in uh, battery life. That is, if, if you are playing with a stock screen, which I imagine most people probably aren't, because I don't, I don't know how you'd put up with that. Uh, let us check something real quick. I am fairly certain that this remembers settings between uh, power cycles and yeah it does. So you can set it to whatever the hell palette you want. Whatever brightness you want. Then remove the touch sensors if you want. 
and it should always boot to that. For this particular kit though, you're probably going to be using button controls anyway, because you need them to enable the uh, bonus feature that is video out. So, on that note, let's go ahead and get on with this, yeah? Alright, and the shell I'm going to be using is this one here that I already have a motherboard in, but I'm not using this one because it doesn't have power switch, which makes testing kind of difficult. But this is a brand new Factory A uh, Game Boy Advance shell, and they are molding these ones to take an IPS screen without having to trim it. And I've been meaning to check this out for a while, and I just haven't. And I'm sorry, I apologize. I was asked to check it out, and I neglected that. But that just goes in just like that. We don't need we don't need the spacers that it comes with or anything like that. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and use the adhesive here, which is going to present some problems because this adhesive is not designed for a, uh, for one of these shells. I'll have to modify it if I want to use it. On second thought, I think I'm just going to save the adhesive, and we'll do a, uh, we'll do a removable install here. I'm going to cut off that tab, just so that it fits into the shell easier. Yes, I am leaving the protective film on. Um, I've had people mention this in the comments quite a few times. Oh, Mako, it looks like you forgot to remove the protective film. I, I didn't forget. I left it there. That was, that was intentional. I wanted to get everything installed, and then usually after the video, um, I'll go in and actually fix the install proper. Uh, sometimes I'm doing the install with a uh, Game Boy Advance motherboard that I can't commit to the build, so I'll have to take it apart afterwards. That is not the case for this one, but... I would like this install to go as quick as as quick as possible. Uh, so let us get started with the wires. Should have booted that up first. I believe we need. Um, that is, I don't know if the touch sensor for the pallets. I don't know if that has a button control equivalent, so I'm going to leave that sensor. The brightness, however, is uh, it's going. We're removing that. And I am fairly certain that is this one. So... I'm going to solder this up before I connect it to the screen. And we're going to start that by tinning the pads. And I always forget to switch tips before doing this. I always make it way more difficult than I need to. My personal preference is this K-tip, but it is not good for tinning these flat pads on this board. But once the iron's hot, switching tips is not the easiest. Oh. 
I suppose we should listen to the instructions too. It says to solder up this ground wire, so let's do it. This soldering is just atrocious. There we go. All right. All five of the wires soldered up. By the way, if you're looking at getting one of these kits and you're looking at this solder and going, gee, I've never soldered to something like this before, I don't know if I can do that, do yourself a favor and buy one of the like $3 practice kits and start with that first rather than trying to learn how to solder on the $80 kit. Um, trust me, you'll thank yourself later. All right. Let me get this connected up. When connecting these, you always want to pinch the connector and the board together. You never want to pinch the board to the screen. Ah, uh, that's what I wanted to check. Okay. So this actually does not fit without modification. That is unfortunate. We can modify it. I just didn't want to have to. We're going to run into a very similar problem with the funny playing kit or shell as well. I'll just cut some of that off with some flush cutters. Part of the reason why I didn't want to glue the screen in. There we go. That's an easy modification. All we had to do is clip a little bit off of the start and select area. Ideally, we should do a little bit more to make sure that this board is sitting perfectly parallel. Uh, it is slightly askew, but it's not askew enough that it's gonna that it's gonna cause us problems. Now, I've seen uh, quite a few other guides recommend taking some of your double-sided tape and then sticking it down to this board. Don't do that. That is not a good idea if you ever have to remove this board. Um, you're gonna have a bad time. What you can do is take a little bit of tape and just put it right on the top, but actually I am going to use the film that they say we're supposed to use. even though I really don't think we'll need it. There we go. Get some of this stuff. Stick it down just like that. Alright. I am going to stick this touch sensor. Where should I stick this touch sensor? I suppose the logical place is down here.
There we go. That way I just tap the lens and I can change my color palettes. Probably won't, but I'd rather have it not need it than vice versa. Especially since I didn't leave it on the stock palette when I turned it off last. Alright. So now we need to do some soldering over here. They give us different size wires. Looks like two of these are thicker. Interesting. Okay. So I am going to plug this in. Flip that up just like that. And then we're going to solder these exactly the way they advise them to be soldered. So this goes to, let me get my cheat sheet. All right, L goes to TP9. Which is right there. Trim this wire down, so it's a little on the long side. Boom. R goes to. TP8, all the way over here. Just like that. All right. Select goes down here somewhere to da, 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 da. TP2, which is that top one right there. And if you're trying to follow along with my instructions as I say them or trying to zoom in to this picture as I solder this, there are images posted on the sale listing. That are nice and clear for this step. Alright. Now set these two off to the side. Oh, I'm going to put the buttons in. Let's stop uh, skipping steps. So I've got the LED light pipe. I'm 
just going to reuse the buttons from OEM shell. I've got another LED light pipe. I don't know why I had an extra on my desk. Brush these out, get the junk out of them. All the years of pocket lint. And then minutes worth of uh, desk lint. Okay. And from here, we will flip that up and over. Actually. I need to route these two wires through the ribbon hole. Otherwise they'll get squished. left one should be the AV pin and the right one should be the ground. I'm going to double check that. Might actually be helpful to uh, color code your wires if you can. I might have to take this apart and double check that. I think I got these switched around. I've always envied people who can just throw wires around and not get them mixed up. Alright, so this one is the AV wire. And this one is the ground. going to put that back in because this screen is not secured so if it falls backwards it will push that board into Game Boy Advance and we could have a real bad day if that happens okay so this one is the AV wire they want that soldered to well they want both of these soldered to the link board but, uh, where'd it 
go. Oh, it's in this one. So ground, you can just use one of these big pins. This one or this one. This one's closest, this one's easier to use. Uh, and then the AV wire, the one that I've bent, they want soldered to pin number three, which I am fairly confident is this one, bottom row, middle pin. That is the one they have highlighted and they're, uh... oh, yeah, you can, you can just look at the, they're all marked. So this bottom one is pin one. This is pin two, which would make this pin three, pin four, pin five, and pin six. One, two, five, and six are marked. So from those, we can infer pin three is bottom row, middle pin. So AV pin goes to pin three, ground goes to one of those anchors. Try not to bridge pins either. Gonna have a bad time. There we go. I should trim this one too while I was at it. soldering iron away. There we go. Alright, so while technically soldering isn't required, um, I think that if you purchase the kit that has AV out, and you don't solder it, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Well, that doesn't fit together too well now, does it? together fine on the bottom. Just on the top there's this huge gap. It's not the wires, there should be plenty of clearance there. That is unfortunate. I just noticed my cap is bulging out a little bit too. That means it's Probably getting ready for a replacement. Well, I'm gonna put it together anyway, but I don't like it.
And hey, look at that, an extra screw. I always hate threading these in for the first time. slipped out, okay. Made me real nervous. It being the screw bit. Ugh. Well, the gap came together when I cranked these screws down, so... I guess it's fine. Ah, my hand is cramping up. All right. This is absolutely something we should have done earlier. Put that lens on. Uh, I don't actually want to use that lens. I want to use a different lens. But I didn't think about it ahead of time, so I'm pulling it off right now. There we go. And batteries. Brightness control works like normal, as expected. Kit itself seems fine. I don't see any issues with it. Uh, I haven't seen any issues with any of the previous kits in uh, quite a while, actually. Their first few kits had some frame dropping and skipping issues, but they've had that issue long since worked out. Uh, so let us... Let us try the cool new feature of this thing. Uh, but first, a message from our sponsor. R Never mind, I'm kidding. Uh, I would like to try a test cart. Oops. So I wanted to pull up this image in particular because of how I think the capture is going to work, or the output itself. Uh, so with this test, we have five circles on the screen. And if you look closely at the circles, you should notice that they are perfectly circular. You know, I can, I can spin the screen around any way I want, and you know, it's not getting wider or skinnier because it is linear. 
I have one pixel left and one pixel up all the way across the screen throughout the whole screen. It's not two to one or three to two or anything like that. It's one to one, which is exactly how it's supposed to be. So now I would like to try the AV out. So how this works, make sure the volume's up. Plug that into that. And we plug this one into that. And then you give me just a second to get this other end plugged into my capture card. And a word of a word of caution on my capture card. Um, please do not judge the output of this by the quality of my capture card. I I am not as well prepared as I thought I was for this. Um, I knew I had a capture card. I haven't used it in a while, and I forgot how bad it is. So just as an example, here is my perfectly working PlayStation 2. Here's some footage from that. And, you know, just between the video quality itself and <laughs> the audio, you know, it's just, it's really not great. And, you know, we, we got to work with what we have. I am, I am going to replace it. I just, I never thought I'd use it for something like this, so I never really cared about the quality. But it's, it'll work for this purpose, just, you know, grain of salt. Anyway, I'm going to unplug my PlayStation 2 and plug in Game Boy Advance. And now that that is plugged in, we have to hold select L and R for however the hell long it is, and then it should just switch over. And indeed it has. Alright, so let me move my OBS window over. It is recording. Audio should be capturing this time. Apologies for that Retron video. But go ahead and take a look. Now, this is why I wanted that test up in particular, because you can see the circles are no longer circular. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not great. What it's doing is it's squeezing a 3 to 2 aspect ratio screen onto a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. And, I mean, it's alright, I guess? And for some reason, it is in black and white. Oh, because I hit a color color palette. There we go. So, Thankfully, we are getting the whole screen. Uh, it does look, oh, no, just kidding. It looks like it's cut off a little bit on the left and the right, but I don't think it should make too big of a difference. Uh, everything else looks all right. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some issues, but I think those are from my capture card. I'm not even gonna bother with these tests. There's no way I'll be able to get that. Uh, and keep in mind throughout these next few demos and tests that I am playing through a capture card, which adds some inherent lag. Uh, actually, we can keep that in there. Oh, so when you restart it, it automatically goes back to the Game Boy itself, and we need to enable output again. Ah. That's annoying, but that's how you trigger the uh, color palettes. Select L and R. Okay, that seems like a very gross oversight. But all right, uh, let us try.
Super Mario. And let me quickly double check that the audio is working. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. But I'm paranoid. I would like to double check. Yep. So, and again, please excuse the quality of the video and the audio. It, um, it's my capture. Oh my goodness. I just want to play the same level I always play. Because that is a good benchmark, I think. Mm -hmm. Not the same level I was on. Now I am having a little bit of a hard time because of the uh, input lag. I'm fairly certain that's from the capture card. And it is something I am compensating for. So even on the video out, I'm not seeing any issues. This looks fine. I mean, latency aside, but I honestly think that's just my capture card. Because um, I am running this in out from composite. Oops. Sorry if you're not paying attention. I'm running this composite out into a USB capture card and then through the OBS preview window. Oh, I thought Yoshi was gone.
Oh, it stopped recording. I'm sorry, I'm back. My my footage never stopped, but my video did. I suppose the video is not too important, but my video is also my microphone. but it's the same level of distortion, unlike the Retron, and I mean, you can play in widescreen if you really hate yourself that much. Um, unlike the Retron, though, this is outputting a square signal because it is analog, so thankfully that's a little bit closer to the proper aspect ratio, um, whereas the Retron, you know, you were always stuck with a 16 by 9 signal. And it was forcing 4 to 3, whereas this is 4 to 3 pillar box. So, I, I think it's a little bit better. Um, it's still, to me, obviously distorted, but it is much, much closer. And, you know what, quite frankly, I think it's, I think it's perfectly serviceable. Let's try one more thing. I want to try Legend of Zelda. I'm just going to try the same exact test that I always try. And so, of course, the pixel response is going to depend entirely on your screen itself, but one thing worth noting is this guy's chain is all sorts of fucked up. Um, I don't, I don't know how this is going to affect other games, but it ain't great. If we switch back to the built-in screen, you can see it's displaying how it should. But when we go back to external, you only see every other link in this chain. And sometimes it switches around. It's kind of weird. I think that's just some strange artifact of the analog to digital conversion. But there you go. Um, I do actually want to try one more thing, and that is something I just thought of. But I want to see if the link port still works with that thing hooked up. I mean, obviously it won't work with the TV out enabled, but. Does it work? Come on. Come in. Yeah. Link port still works. So there you go. Not 100% sure how they did it, but I'd have to look at the pinout. But that's, that's pretty neat. There you go. Well... I think that's all I've got. This kit is actually super, super cool. Um, if I had one complaint, it's that I really wish they would have, I really wish they wouldn't have gone with composite. Um, I understand the appeal of having it be a, a uh, I was gonna say solderless, but it's clearly not solderless. Um, what it is, is there's no external port modification or anything like that. I understand the appeal of that. That's actually really neat. However, composite is real shitty in 2021. I literally do not have a TV that supports composite. That's not true. I do have a TV that supports composite. It is under my bed in storage in the off chance I need something that I can plug something composite into. But it's not a TV that I use, it's a small, uh, it's a small 32 inch junk 720p TV from like 2008. And I guess it works, but if you've bought a TV within the last three years, you probably don't have a composite input on it. So, that being said, um, 
it's still pretty cool. I appreciate it. I just wish we weren't stuck with composite. Um, I would have liked to seen component. That would have been significantly better. Um, or if not component, you know, HDMI maybe. You know, I mean, pretty sweet. Um, but that being said, if you have composite, if you have composite, it works great. I'm very pleased with this. I really like it. Um, I don't see myself using it that much because one of the main downsides of this function of, of this method of playing Game Boy games on your TV is that you are forced to use the Game Boy as a controller. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I just think there are more comfortable controllers. So limiting yourself to this is, I don't know, it's not the greatest. Um, but of course you could always go the uh, inside gadgets route and wire in one of his RX boards, one of those bad boys, and then hook up whatever the hell controller you want. But Or hell, you could do a half step, and I think this is probably the even easier option. If you look into the GBA HD, I'll throw a link in the description. Uh, ZW Energy has a GitHub with the full project on there. Um, you could use just the Arduino portion of it, wire it up to one of these bad boys, and then plug a Super Nintendo controller in, and I think that would be pretty sweet. But if you're going that step, you might as well do the whole GBA HD, and then you get HDMI. So it is what it is. But if you want a portable Game Boy Advance that is backlit, and you can play as much as you want, and then when you get home, you just plug it into your TV and play that way, this is absolutely the way to go. The IPS kit itself works great. The TV out works great. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have anything else to say. Um, they've been making incremental improvements to it ever since their first kit basically a year ago or a year and a half ago. It really hasn't been that long. Um, and they've done a fantastic job. I'm very pleased with this. Um, I suppose the other thing I could comment on is this shell. This is the Factory A IPS ready Game Boy Advance shell. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I still prefer funny playings. I didn't like how there was that gap in the top until I screwed it together and there is still this gap right here. I don't know what's going on with that. It's on the other side too. I think if you're looking for an IPS ready shell, funny playings is uh, still the way to go. I have zero problems with that. This one I think could use a little bit of improvement. The extreme rate one is also pretty nice if you're into that finish, but that could use a little bit of improvement too. Oh, and what the hell? Maybe I didn't screw that in all the way. Now the lens doesn't sit right. That's weird. I don't know. It it works. If you don't have a choice, it'll work. It's not terrible. I just like funny playing's better still. Uh, but anyway, go ahead and check out the link. There's descriptions to all this stuff. There's gonna or yeah, there's. Whew, go ahead and check out the description. There's links to all this stuff. Um, backlight kit, shell, ZW Energy's GBHD. Um, perhaps even other videos, last video I did on this kit, etc. And uh, thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop for shooting this my way to check out. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day.